Crafty Clan. Do you need to change whether you ship to the UK or not because of the new safety regulations? Have you seen this in your Etsy dashboard? Let's have a look. So this could affect everybody who ships to the UK and everybody in the UK who ships to the UK. So a little scary thing on the Etsy dashboard, um, you see at the bottom here, new UK CA marketing requirements in the UK starting the 1st of January 2023. So first of all, don't freak out about Christmas, get, get Christmas over. Um, sellers based in the UK or shipped to the UK or ship to UK buyers need to make sure their products and packaging are compliant with new regulations. Check out our step-by-step -step guide. So obviously that has had people freaking out, but when I clicked on that, first of all, we'll start with what Etsy says in the seller handbook. I'm going to give you the quick TLDR um, before we start. Firstly, with the disclaimer, I'm not a legal person or anything. So if you're in any way unsure, totally check for yourself and possibly get some proper help but this is what I'm seeing and roughly for people who don't know the politics the UK left the EU um, but grandfathered in well kept all of our um, laws and regulations and everything for a while and then have slowly been changing them over. So it looks like this UKCA is just the UK equivalent of the CE mark, which is something you get on, have I, have I got a piece of electronic sitting about here? I don't see it. But you get on many things that you buy to say, you know, this is safe to the regulations of that kind of thing. Certain things like, I mean, people are freaking out and saying, oh no, I won't be able to sell toys anymore. CE regulations for, well, toy safety regulations have been in place for long enough. If you were selling toys to the UK, you should have been compliant with this already. So if you weren't and you're selling toys, get get diving in and looking at this and other similar things. But basically, if you were following all the rules before, quite a lot of the changes that Etsy's making, not Etsy, that the UK are making, is just taking the rules that the EU had, putting them into our own words, but still keeping them pretty much the same. We sort of have to, I'm not going to go into politics, but this is what it looks like. But let's let's have a look at what Etsy said in the seller handbook. It says it's a six minute read with added sarcasm. It might go a little longer. Product safety essentials, important resources for selling safe products to the UK. Um, information and resources to promote safety and help you comply with applicable requirements. And there's lots of links in this as well. Um, this should be linked to in your salad dashboard, but I'll link it somewhere in the comments of this video too. Friendly disclaimer, friendly. If you list products for sale on Etsy, you must comply with all Etsy policies and legal requirements applicable to those products and product listings, including those in your jurisdiction and those to which you sell. This information provides a non-exhaustive overview regarding key legal requirements for selling to the UK for educational purposes only. So like, like me in this video, Etsy is not responsible if you get it wrong. <laughs> um, it's subject to change over time and not legal advice. It's not intended to create and receipt of it doesn't constitute a lawyer-client relationship. Yeah, do, do. okay. Please consult somebody who knows what they're talking about. As an international marketplace, Etsy requires that your products meet all applicable requirements in the country they're made, sold and delivered. If you're based in the UK or are selling products to consumers based in the UK, you must make sure that you meet all the applicable safety, labelling and other applicable UK legal requirements. It's also important that you understand UK authorities' expectations for safety, compliance and conduct. The UK Office for Product Safety Standards, UK 
OPSS <laughs> is the UK's national product safety regulator for all products other than vehicles, medicine and food. UK OPSS develops product safety policies and enforces applicable product safety requirements. In addition to the UK OPSS, local trading standards offices can help businesses understand and comply with applicable requirements. That's what trading standards. Contact them if you're not sure including some reporting of potential product safety concerns. To learn more about trading standards offices and how to locate your local authority, known as your primary authority, please visit there's a link. What requirements apply to products sold in or exported to the UK? All consumer products sold in or exported to the UK must be safe. I really wish that went without saying, but it really doesn't seem to. And I know a lot of people, especially when they just start up, they think things don't apply to them. Um, it's a US thing, but if you've missed the pink sauce debacle, um, there's a, I think it's a TikTok chef who's made her own sauce. It's pink sauce, but she's released it for sale and it's selling out. But the I think it started, there was no ingredients listed on it. And now the ingredients are clearly wrong. The serving size is wrong. She's not had it tested. It looks like it probably needs refrigerated, but it's getting sent not refrigerated. There's there's a whole heap of things. And she's just saying, oh, but I'm just a small seller. What would I know? You, you need to make sure that your stuff's not going to give people food poisoning. There There are rules and regulations. So as a seller, it's your responsibility to demonstrate safety. This means complying with all applicable regulations and making sure your consumers have the information they need to use your product safely. If they are applicable designated standards that apply to your product, meeting those standards provides a presumption of conformity with applicable safety requirements. That roughly means basically for the things that are covered when someone in the UK buys it, like if I know this doesn't cover food, but if you think about it, for someone who's buying stuff, buying food in the UK, they expect all the food that they buy will be covered by the safety requirements for buying food. <laughs> um, the list of designated standards can be found here. If there is no designated standard, your product must still comply with any other applicable regulation, including general product safety regulations. So this is one thing people have to realize. This doesn't cover every single thing that can be sold. I will get into the list of, of the things, but if it's not included in these regulations, obviously it has to be safe. It has to not be murdering people. Are there applicable labelling requirements for products sold in the UK? As a general rule, you should make sure that your product or its packaging includes all the required instructions and warnings for safe use. This is common sense, not if you're just selling to the UK, but wherever you're selling, you can pop. A little, I got Vistaprint. I made up some little cards with pretty pictures of some of my sculptures on them and notes just for how to care for them. It makes common sense, but also it's a little bit of branding. It's cute pictures. It's got my shop name at the bottom, but a little thing going, yeah, here's how you look after it and how you use it. Um, you should also make sure that your product is named labelled with the name and address of manufacturer or importer. For better traceability, including product or best batch reference for identifying when and where the product was made is also recommended. The UK has also adopted the UK CA mark similar to the CA marking in place in the EU. So, we're not in the EU anymore, so they've switched over things and given it a different name, which serves as an attestation. Did I say that right? I think I did. That a product meets relevant requirements. Products covered by legal legislation require the mark. So the products that are covered by this, the same as the products that are covered by the CE marketing. Um, they cannot be imported or sold without it. For more information, click the link. So bear in mind, 
if you are selling to customers in a different country, you are importing to that country. It doesn't matter that we are only little individuals. We still have to follow the law. Most of the time, it's not there to trip us up and it's not too difficult. Are there UK best practices I should be aware of? Yes, UK authorities have published helpful guidance for various parties in the supply chain to make sure the products they provide are safe and compliant. If you produce the products you sell on Etsy, you can fill, find the additional guidance at the link. Guidance for distributors, which shouldn't really be anyone on Etsy. Um, additional product safety do due diligence guidance is available here. The British Standards Institution has published a standard that provides code of practice for bringing safe products to the market. Link again. What should I do if I learn of a potential safety issue related to a product that I sold in the UK? I mean, I hope every single one of us that's selling our items don't want any kind of potential safety issue. We want our items to be as safe as possible. Anyway, if you learn of a potential safety issue relating to a product you sold in the UK, you should immediately investigate and assess the issue. Hopefully that goes without saying. If you determine the product poses a potential safety risk, you may have an obligation to report to the UK authorities. Kind of fair enough. I suppose it's like the amber teething things that babies have choked on. If you find out that something... It wasn't faulty, but this is how it functions and this is something that happens. You should be telling people so that other people don't do it. Um, depending on the circumstances, reporting may be made to the UK OPSS or your local trading standards. Um, in some cases, market withdrawal or recall may be warranted. Um, so, yeah, I'm sure we've all seen that at times. Tesco's announces that a certain thing's been recalled. That's because they found something up with it. Um, uh, there's another code of practice on product recall at the link. Are the requirements in Northern Ireland the same as the rest of the UK? No, they may be different from the rest of the UK. Um, Northern Ireland may be required to bear a CE mark or a UK NI mark um, because of Brexit and things, Northern Ireland because it's connected to, well, it's, it's the island of Ireland, so it's got a border with an EU country being Ireland, um, so there's different rules there. But I just wanted to, um, it took, I clicked through a lot of things, and the most important thing we want to know is what things need the UK CA marking? So I found this. This is gov.uk guidance using the UK CA marking. So, and it has a list, which is very handy. So, product areas covered by the UK CA marking. So, this is the stuff they probably had to have a CE marking before. And this is if you manufacture or handle products in the following areas. Toys, we've already mentioned that. Toys, if you're selling to the UK, you already needed to jump through hoops for these. So I'm sorry if you hadn't realised it. There was a big hoo-ha years ago when this all came out. But yeah, toys have to be safe. Um, pyrotechnics. Thing, things what blow up or go on fire have to have safety regulations. I, I am not going to complain about that at all. I think that's good. Um, recreational craft and personal watercraft. Now, this one took me a minute. I had to search for this. Like, recreational cat craft. Is that knitting? <laughs> but no, um, by craft, the, the personal watercraft kind of gives it away. That's stuff what goes on water. Um, simple pressure vessels. Absolutely. Please make sure. I I hope nobody's selling pressure vessels on Etsy. I suppose you could be. Um, but things that are expected to build up pressure inside them, if they are not tested and made sure they're safe, might not be able to contain the pressure inside them and go kabloom. So very good. Electromagnetic compatibility. Yeah, make sure that you're 
electronics aren't damaging things, um, non-automatic weighing instruments, um, measuring instruments, measuring containers and bottles. I'm mentioning these all together because this is like scientific, but well, baking. You expect when you are baking and you go and measure a certain amount of things as directed by your recipe you expect that the equipment that you've bought to measure it measures it within a sensible degree of accuracy so it makes sense that you have to prove if you're selling a measuring container that you haven't just drawn on some lines by hand and go well that, that looks like a kilo or something <laughs> um lifts yeah, that's if you're not in the UK, if you're in America, that would be elevators. I think I would like to make sure that a lift that I get in that is carrying my person to a different floor through a lift shaft. Um, I think we've all seen movies with what happens if that's, <laughs> yeah, we want to make sure that's safe. Equipment for potentially explosive atmospheres. Yes, radio equipment, fair enough. Pressure equipment, I think that's already been covered. Uh, personal protective equipment, yes, using the stuff to keep you safe. You want to make sure that it keeps you safe. Glass app gas appliances, machinery, equipment for use outdoors, eco design. This is something that Eatsy's just brought up recently as well. If you're claiming it's eco, you're going to have to prove it's eco. So if you are saying things are, are eco, um, then check on the regulations for that. Um, aerosols and low voltage electrical equipment. So yeah, um, hopefully that kind of eases people's minds a bit. It's not so much necessarily that regulations have changed, it's just that the UK had to make our own regulations. We can't keep on just riding on the coattails of the EU when we're supposed to have left the EU. I hope that makes sense. Anyway, if anyone knows anything else or anything diff different, let us know in the comments below. I will link in the description of this video. I will link the link to get you started with that document that I just read. I hope that helps everyone. Um, yeah, catch you later.